Hello and welcome back to my channel Christian Faith and Fiction. My name's Lou and today I'm going to be sharing with you my reading vlog for Prince Caspian by C.S. Lewis. I have been looking through it, looking at some of the similarities with um, some of the Bible passages that I could find. Um, if you've read the book and uh, you have anything to add to that, please do leave that down in the comments. Um, I do suggest that you read the book first before you continue with this um, video. So if you haven't read it, go ahead, save it to your watch later playlist and then come back later on. So I'm going to assume that anyone continuing doesn't mind spoilers for the story. Um, let's see how I got on. So at the beginning of Prince Caspian, Peter, um, Edmund, Susan and Lucy get called into Narnia from um, an English railway station and they find themselves in the ruins of Care Paraval and they um, after discovering where they are they they hide they find a dwarf is in trouble and rescue him and he tells them the story of Prince Caspian and why they've been called there. The first half of the book really narrates the story of Prince Caspian and, and the, how they got up to the time when um, the children have been called into Narnia. Family Guide to Narnia says that um, they, they saw similarities between Prince Caspian's story and um, King Josiah in the Bible. Um, I looked up that one and yeah, there are some um, that King is um, someone who had to restore the kingdom back to God after his um, parents and grandparents had got turned away from God. I also saw similarities to Joash, another king who became um, king at the age of seven, I think, after his um, grandmother had tried to kill him and all of his siblings. But this story reminds me mostly of the story of David, although the similarities don't follow the chronological order of the story in the books of Samuel, there are definitely some similarities that I have found reading this book. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, David is anointed by Saul to be the next king of Israel. But King Saul doesn't want this to happen. He wants his son to be king. And so he tries to kill David. In the Narnian story, Prince Caspian um, should be the rightful king. But his uncle Miraz is ruling in his stead. And when his uncle has a son, he tries to kill Prince Caspian so that his son can then be the next king. In 1 Samuel chapter 22, David flees from Saul and he meets up with a band of discontented people and becomes their, um, their chief. Prince Caspian flees from his uncle and ends up meeting up with the old Narnians who are in hiding and he becomes their, um, the chief of their army. In 1 Samuel chapter 23, Saul finds out where David is hiding and he goes to besiege him and um, in this story, Miraz finds out where Caspian is hiding and he goes to besiege him and the, the old Narnians flee and hide in um, Aslan's Howl, which is um, a hill with underground passages built over the stone table. And David is hiding in a cave in chapter 24 when Saul um, runs into him. The old Narnians get beaten down in battle and that's when Prince, Prince Caspian decides to call for help using Queen Susan's horn. And that leads on to the rest of the story where we pick up again with the children and the dwarf, Trumpkin. So the second half of the, the book follows um, the children and Trumpkin as they are making their way back to Prince Caspian. The world has changed so much that um, the children are not used to it anymore. It's, it's kind of changed and they, they kind of think they've getting lost and um, at one point they hit a river with a big ravine and Lucy thinks that she sees um, Aslan but nobody else believes her and so they all go off in the wrong direction and um, run into an attacking party and have to double back and go back in the other direction. In the night Lucy is awake and everyone else is asleep and she goes and she sees Aslan face to face and um, he gives her the courage to go back and say... Um, to tell the others um, which is the right way to go and to leave them but they can't see Aslan only Lucy can see him so when she wakes up the others um, Susan tells her just to go back to sleep and this reminded me a lot of um, 1 Samuel 3 where God speaks 
to Samuel and wakes him up in the night and Eli um, doesn't understand. He hasn't had that experience of God speaking to him. And so he just tells us, um, he tells uh, Samuel to go back to sleep. Trumpkin the dwarf is also a bit like Eli in that um, he has never seen Aslan and at the beginning of um, chapter 3 in 1 Samuel it says that they were not many visions. Um, Eli was the priest, the high priest there but he had not seen a vision himself. So when Samuel sees God Eli doesn't understand and he um, doesn't twig onto it to start with. Lucy is able to see what the others can't see and, and this is often the case for those people who have um, a prophetic gifting is that they see ahead and they see in, in what God is going wanting to do next and wanting to say um, but sometimes other people who haven't had that experience um, can um, ridicule it or just, or just ignore it and, and think it's not something that applies to them. Also, for those of us who have non-Christian members of our family, we can be treated in the same way that Lucy was treated, where it's just, a, oh, you're, you're just, you're, you're deluding it, you're making it up, you're not really um, experiencing God, it's, it's all in your mind, um, and go back to sleep, just, you know, don't disturb me, don't make me uncomfortable. Um, that's what some of the people can feel like and say to us. It can be very frustrating to be able to see God at work but have other people not believe you. And God's word to us is the same as Aslan's was to Lucy and that is, you know, whether other people follow him or not, we still have a, we still have to follow. We have to be obedient to God whether other people are going to come with us or not. And we just have to hope and pray that just like the children and the dwarf that um, they will in time come to you, see um, God for themselves as the children saw Aslan eventually even Trumpkin the dwarf who didn't believe at all um, even he saw Aslan eventually so we have to open pray that our um, unbelieving friends and family will come to see God in time but in the meantime we have to follow him for ourselves. So when the children get to Aslan's how they find Aslan and Aslan sends um, the two boys and Trumpkin into the, uh, the mound and when they get there they find that um, those people who had blown the horn had kind of given up a bit on um, Aslan answering their cry for help and um, Nickerbrick has invited, the, Nickerbrick the dwarf has invited in a hag and a werewolf and they are wanting to call up the white witch from the dead and um, basically what's happening is they, they called for help they prayed, if as it were, and they didn't get the answer when they wanted it. And so even Dr. Cornelius starting to doubt in the ability of the horn. Um, but uh, the badger is the only one who stays true and remains firm and keeps believing. And um, this really speaks to me a lot about when we pray for things to happen and we don't get an answer straight away and God seems to be silent and there is a temptation, of course, to doubt in the power of prayer and to doubt in God um, and even to turn away and turn to other other powers or be that um, our own our own physical strength, um, money or um, spiritual powers that come from other beliefs and other religions. But we are, you know, we're encouraged in this story to be like um, the badger, because obviously we know as the people watching on that actually Peter and Edmund are at the door um, listening in on the conversation. And um, just as we think God has abandoned us, he could be at the door waiting to answer our prayer. So it's really um, important not to give up hope um, at the last moment. And this reminds me a lot of the story in 1 Samuel 28, when um, God has left Saul and he's not hearing from him and he's not um, properly repented and he, he's been rejected by God and um, Saul ends up um, turning to a medium and asking him to call up the spirit of Samuel, um, asking her to call up the spirit of Samuel so he, him, he can talk to them and just as Saul calling on a ghost um, to try and uh, get some guidance instead of turning to God um, that leads to his death ultimately um, in the story in Prince Caspian, it leads to the death of Nickerbrick and the hag and the werewolf um, as they 
uh, fight back and, and fight against the king. So while Peter and Edmund and Prince Caspian are waiting for Aslan to do something, they stall for time by um, sending a challenge to King Muraz and um, say that um, Peter will fight him one-on-one -on -one for the armies. And this reminded me a lot of um, 1 Samuel 17, where um, the armies of Israel are facing off um, Goliath, the giant, and he is calling people to challenge him and fight for the instead of the armies and David goes to challenge him. Meanwhile while this is happening the the girls are with Aslan and they are basically having a party and celebrating the return of Aslan and taking him around the town and this um, reminds me of 2 Samuel chapter 6 which is where David brings the ark of God back to Jerusalem and he celebrates with dancing and goes crazy and has a party and his wife Michal says to him you know she's disgusted with his behavior doesn't think it's regal and royal enough and he um, just says I'm going to be more undignified than this and this party really reminds me of that that um, the children are having with Aslan this joyful um, celebration of the return of the presence of Aslan and just as Michal despised David um, so some of the townspeople in Prince Caspian's story, um, they despise Aslan. They just they think it's terrible. They they're um, scared of talking creatures and they run away. So the story ends with um, the children returning back to our own world, and um, Prince Caspian is set up on the throne. Some of the other books that I've been reading have other things to say. Um, particularly the uh, family guide to Narnia that um, has lots of different uh, biblical references in it. If you can think of any other things um, or any other similarities to uh, things in the Bible then let me know down in the comments. Thank you so much to everyone who has commented or liked or shared or subscribed to my channel. I really appreciate that. Um, I'll be back again soon with another video but till then God bless. Take care. Bye.